In this video, I'm going to discuss the anatomy of the lumbar spine. I've got a few models in front of me that I'm going to use. So let's focus on this particular area of the human body. So the lumbar spine is five individual segments. So we've got L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. Obviously the thoracic spine meets the lumbar and then the junction point here will be known as the thoracolumbar junction. And the lumbar will naturally meet the sacrum. So where L5 meets the first sacral vertebra will be known as the LS, which is known as the lumbar sacral junction along here. Typically it is in a extension curve. I don't mean hyperextension like this. Okay, so it has what we call a an extension which would be known as a secondary type of curve because the T-spine which is a thoracic and the sacral spine will be known as the primary curvature. Bony landmarks we have got the vertebral body located anteriorly. There is a ligament anterior along here called the anterior longitudinal ligament which comes all the way up and all the way down along this area. I'll show you that in a second. Posteriorly we have got these bony landmarks here which are what we call hatchet shaped and these are known as the spinous processes. So this will be L1 spinous process, L2, 3, 4 and 5. Next we have got the lamina. So for instance if you happen to have a disc prolapse then the orthopedic surgeon might do something called a laminectomy where they might remove part of the lamina to go down to the bulge of the disc to remove. So then they'll do like a, like a micro discectomy. Coming across, we've got the facet joints along here. So we've got two pairs. So we've got one either side. And for instance, this is L5, this is S1. So this will be the inferior facet of L5 that articulates with the superior facet of S1. And then this will be the superior facet of L5, which will articulate with the inferior facet of L4. These are roughly vertically orientated and potentially we've only got something like one to two degrees of rotation per segment, give or take. So within the lumbar we've only roughly got five to ten degrees in total along there. Hypersensitive, so they're like two thumbnails rubbing each other and naturally can cause back pain. Medically, they would be known as the apophyseal joint or zygo-apophyseal joints along here. Progressing lateral, we have got this area here called the transverse processes. And many things attach to these areas, like the quadratus lumborum muscle. The psoas will come laterally to that. And also to the lower two, near the L5 and L4, will be the iliolumbar ligament, which I'll show you shortly. We happen to have the pedicles. So if you looked at the vertebral body, basically the vertebral body where they come out like this will be the pedicles along here, which are like the, the structures, if you like, that form part of the neural arch. And then the two pedicles will form with the lamina where the spinal cord will sit in. In the lumbar, it's not physical to call it the spinal cord because it ends around L1, give or take to be known as the corda equina, which is basically the tail of a horse. So if this was a T12, it would still be the spinal cord, but if it is L3, then it would be the corda equina, because it would end, as I said, around the L1 region. The space that exits in between will be known as the intervertebral forearm end. Okay, so think of a word between the vertebra, inter between the vertebral foramen or foramen, which is a space. And then that provides the space for the nerve root. If this was L1, then this would be the L1 nerve root that would exit because it is below. So for instance, this would be L1, L2, and so on. And where the disc is located, if I show you on this one, if I look at this one here, then if this is, say, L4 that sits on L5 along here, then you'll see that 
if we happen to have a disc that bulges, this would be the L4 exiting nerve root. But you might find you get symptoms where the disc touches the traversal or descending nerve root. So this would actually be touching the L5 nerve root along here. And if this was the S, sorry, this was the L5 S1 disc, then that disc prolapse would be touching the S1 nerve root rather than the actual L5 nerve root exits on its side. Also with this vertebra, if I do this and connect it along here, there, where it is located on there, you can see that if I just pull it apart slightly, you will notice that there is a fracture either side. If there's a fracture on one side, they would call it a spondylolysis, and then that would be of the pars. Like on this one here, I've marked it in black along there, so that would be a pars fracture. Typically the lower one, the L5, and if it happens to have a pars fracture either side, and then it fractures both sides, then it will slip, and they call that a spondylolysis. Okay, so lysis means a slippage, and a lolysis would mean a defect. So that's a little bit about the conditions on there. On this one, this is a human anatomy pelvis, and you can see the lumbar spine is partly attached. This is the L5 spinous process here. You can see the superior facet joints around there. That would articulate with L4 inferior facet joints on the side. And you can see on this one, there is a ligament called the iliolumbar ligament. If I turn it around this way, you can see that the ligament is here. It has five bands. Okay, there's another band on L4 come here. So the ilium to the lumbar, there are bands along this area in here. And I mentioned the long ligament called the anterior longitudinal. There is one called the posterior, which you cannot see in this case. And this would be the vertebral body. And then you can actually see a disc. So there is the L5S1 disc along here. You can also see the ligaments along this area. This would be the supraspine ligaments and the ligament in between would be known as the interspinous ligaments. So that's the majority of the bony landmarks and some other interesting anatomy concepts regarding the lumbar spine. Thank you for watching.